Challenger. Welcome, guys and gals. This is your host, Frog Prince Rana, and thank you for dropping by. Generally, my videos are about debunking bad science. Once in a while, I do venture outside a little bit, maybe talking about movies to watch or books to read. In this video, I would like to dive into the mindset of flat earther. Yes, it may be a rabbit hole, and for my sanity, I might pull back when I get scared. So today, the focus would be on flattered believer debate tactics. I have only been active in the scene recently, but I have been following pseudoscience almost all my life. Not to follow it, but it was the same reason I had for reading different religious books and mythologies, sometimes for fun and sometimes to know my enemies. From my personal debate with such group and watching their interaction and response, it is safe to say that all these groups use almost the same techniques and subterfuge. Absolute bottom of the ring are those channels with comments disabled. As a viewer recently so eloquently had put, it is equivalent in YouTube of putting your fingers in your ear and going, la 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 la. But to be really honest, I don't mind that much. The one moderating comments would fall into the same group in my opinion. But those who leave comment open? Before continuing, I would like to add that I am talking about common attributes that I see between all conspiracy nuts. That is not to say that these attributes are only common in conspiracy nuts. Oh no, these are simply human attributes. And I am sure we are all guilty of it from time to time. You, me, them. Let's start with an example. This is Trey Dyer, who recently had issued a challenge with a reward of $100 to anyone who can present him with a photo of Earth that is showing the complete Earth and no CGI, composite and so on. Obviously, it is a very easy challenge. And obviously, I know that it would not be honored. And yet, it was fun material for me. As I could make a video talking about the challenge, all the stipulations flat earthers make and complain about and how much of it actually matters. I could talk about photography and composition. Finally, it was fun to guess why any presented photo would get disqualified. By the way, link is in description if you want to check it out. Of course, I wasn't the only one responding to this challenge. And many of us have presented the same photo. Now let's look at my interaction with Trey on his channel video. We will get back to original poster for this message later. Now let's see it from the first reply from Trey, followed by me. So Trey writes, Scientifically, it hasn't been proven and pseudoscience don't count. Well, what I wrote will not make sense without the original post context, but just go with it right now. I wrote, the dishonesty is truly staggering. Trey actually replied to me with, Fact 1. Y'all believe we can have gas pressure next to a container is mind-boggling. Now, I will not read the full reply, as it follows with Fact 2, Fact 3, Fact 4, Fact 5, and Fact 6. Then an impossible challenge, followed by Instagram and Twitter address. Of course, like many of my peers, I have explained every single of his so-called fact. But this is not about those points. Who knows the term for this kind of response? Well, it is called Gish Gallop. Simply put, it is a technique used during debating that focuses on overwhelming an opponent with as many arguments as possible, without regard for accuracy or strength of the arguments. Now, these arguments can be vague claims, anecdotal statements, misrepresented facts, and irrelevant comments. When the claims are generalized or vague, it can be difficult to refute. A statement like, many experiments show that the earth is not moving, is difficult to refute as without more details, we don't know exactly which experiment they are talking about. We then have to summarize all the experiments we think they might be thinking of. Maybe a Bedford level experiment, 
Michael Morley experiment, or maybe a risk failure. Who knows? It can be a photograph or video without exact coordinate or more importantly, without observer height, which makes any analysis extremely difficult, if not impossible. There would be intentional or unintentional misrepresentation like buoyancy and density are a scientific fact on why things float and why things fall. And times, it would just be outright lie. When implementing this technique, flat earthers often use a prepared list of arguments, which are easy to fire off rapidly, without much thought. These are mostly sound bites that are designed to appeal to what goes for common sense. And once you refute one of these arguments, they just move on to the next point on their list, in an attempt to wear their opponent down. At the end, all these techniques make the flat earther seem more prepared and often appears to successfully discredit the opposing stance because a person is unlikely to be successful at refuting every single point presented against them during a debate. Note that we are still in the civil realm. We will get to personal attacks later. Back to Trey. Now, before discussing ways to deal with this gish gallop approach, let's see what I did. Bear in mind that I was probably stoned when I replied. Fact 1. You requested a photo with certain stipulation. Fact 2. You ignore every photo presented and call it CGI without explaining why you have called it so. The rest of your fact doesn't pertain to this conversation, correct? Yep, there is a grammatical mistake. At times, I can blame autocorrect feature, but this one is all on me. So, ways of responding. Of course, the best one in my opinion would be full rebuttal, which means going over every point made by your opponent. This can get difficult in a live scenario. In a response video, it is easier, but it does come with a price. If you choose to go down this road, and had missed or did not refute a point properly. Our flat earther will jump on that and try to claim that it invalidates the remaining arguments. This is a dangerous but satisfying approach. Another approach can be selecting some points to refute. Just like statistics, it can be simple random sampling, meaning you can just choose some points, maybe random or maybe you like those points. Or it can be more like stratified sampling or cluster sampling, meaning you are grouping this point based on some criteria and then addressing the group instead of individual points. The issue with these responses are, Flat Earth would often accuse you of cherry-picking arguments and fall back to those that were not addressed in your rebuttal. Then you have best point rebuttal or worst point rebuttal. For best point, you may even think that it would be a good idea to ask your opponent what they think their best point is and refute it, thinking that is the end of it. Oh no, you naive glober. They will just move to their next point. Finally, we have thematic rebuttal. This is basically identifying the main theme or themes and arguing against that instead of focusing on their individual arguments. In their case, a lot of the time, this theme would be either gravity or curve, like when they talk about gas pressure next to a vacuum, or water finding its level, or why we don't fly off to space. This, I think, is the most effective method. We can address the core of their argument while taking away the advantage flat earthers get from multiple weak arguments. Finally, it is better to get them to explain the theme, so at the end they cannot claim that you have misunderstood their point. As I mentioned, these are not exclusive to flat earthers. I have personally seen and faced similar tactics from fellow debunkers. To quickly wrap up Trey Saga, it went like following. He told me my photos are not valid and he gave little details on how it was faked on his last video. As any prudent person would do, I asked him for an exact link just to be sure. Then after watching that video, I again asked for confirmation 
if I watch the correct segment of that video for his explanation. And as I'm a stupid glover, I thought he was talking about the blue marble composition. Some idiot in front of a nice keyboard was talking about that around 1 minute 55 second mark for 14 seconds. And yeah, I was wrong. Trey's reasoning is, you cannot have gas pressure next to a container, which means space is not real. Thus, we can't have been to space to take a photo of Earth. Damn, I didn't foresee this coming. This does not warrant a debunking, but in case anyone is interested in a real reply, it would be following. When Flat Earther talks about gas pressure and container, what they are really getting at is how gas pressure tries to reach equilibrium. You can observe it by pricking a balloon, where the air inside under heavy pressure tries to rush outside through that small hole which ends up bursting it. The argument is, if space is what science says it is, meaning it is a vacuum that has nothing or very little thing, our atmosphere with the pressure would obviously behave the way like the balloon and spread out over space. As we still have our atmosphere, that surely means space is not real or not what science says it is. Well, what can we do to test out this theory? Well, we can start by measuring the atmospheric pressure at sea level. Commonly, we will use a barometer, which is simply a column of mercury in a glass tube that rises or falls as the weight of the atmosphere changes. This pressure at sea level is around 14.7 psi or pound per square inch. Now, on a summer day, with a temperature of 25 degree, if I drive to M62, that has the highest motorway summit in UK at 350 meter above sea level, that pressure would decrease to 14.12 psi. Even if the barometer is not calibrated, which is something one would normally do, you still observe a drop in mercury as the pressure drops. As you go higher and higher, the barometer mercury would continue to drop. What does this tell us? We have a value at sea level that decreases as we go up in altitude. This is what we call a gradient. Why is the pressure higher near sea level? Well, in simple terms, imagine all the molecules near the bottom that has all the atmosphere above it basically sitting on them. And thus, the higher we go, the less pressure we have. Now, obviously, this doesn't tell us if it goes all the way down without going all the way up to Karman line at 100 km. This is what we calculate space to begin, where the atmosphere becomes too thin to support aeronautical flight. But it does disprove their claim. We can test and confirm difference in pressure between sea level and M62 summit. If we go up to 1 km in height, it will drop to 13.09 psi at 25 degrees centigrade. At 10 km, that becomes 4.04 psi. So obviously, our observation for balloon does not hold for atmosphere, because in that case, we would not have this variation. The pressure would equalize and be same in all altitude. I do have a video explaining this to much greater details and talking about how gas escapes the Earth's gravity after reaching escape velocity. Hopefully, link would be in description. Back to the original poster. I just made a response video on her a couple of days ago. And her post was, Exactly! There is not one picture or one straight photograph of this whole Earth from space because space is fake and we've all been lied to. It's been flat. LOL! No one's getting that hundred dollar. Keep speaking the truth. This is the la la la. Now maybe my reply of the dishonesty is truly staggering makes some sense. Or maybe not. Obviously there are ad hominem attacks. There are several flat earthers that comes to mind. Whose entire stick is calling people troll and using ha 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 many times over while not making a point. To be fair, some debunkers also fall into the same group. 
nothing can be done except just ignoring, I guess. Well, this is where I will end this video. I do hope you have enjoyed it and thank you for sticking around till the end. Being a small channel, I do appreciate like, comment and sharing if you choose to. And it also helps with the algorithm. If you could subscribe, that would help my channel grow and would be thoroughly appreciated. Wherever you are, have a safe day, signing off.